All right, here I am with Justin, Jared's brother, and uh, who's the all right, who is the captain and who is the first mate? That's Jared's the captain. I'm the first mate. You're the first yeah. mate. Okay. So as as first mate, what were your duties on the on the ship when you guys are heading down for for your second relief uh, trip down to yeah. Haiti? Um, basically, in a nutshell, was um, making sure everything that he wanted to go happen, make it happen, make it happen smoothly, safely. Um, make sure the crew got along, because that's a huge, huge deal. If the crew's not getting along, the ship's not going to work the way it needs to work. Um, that's a big theme with the schooners and, and, uh, and stuff, is is crew unity and working together to accomplish goals. Right, right. Like when you got, when, when there's these schools and what, what do you call those, um, the schools at sea and stuff like that, semesters, semesters at sea. Yeah. Isn't a big part of that is team building and, and learning how to work with others? Because the, the, you got to think of the ship as like a living, breathing thing. And each each person, their job is, is like an organ in a, in a living, breathing entity. And if one of those things isn't working properly, it's going to affect everything. Yep. And, uh, you know, if the bosun isn't doing his job properly, the rigging's going to be falling apart. If the deckhands aren't doing their jobs properly, everything else is going to fall apart. It's just everything leads so tightly together, so integrated. Um, so with our, our trip the second time, uh, we had a pretty green crew. Uh, everyone was from all over the place, all over the country. Some, uh, some were fishermen from Alaska. We had a girl as a fisherman. Um, we had a bosun from Canada. Um, then we just had a lot of random people that never sailed in their lives that just always wanted to do something like this. And, uh, a boat like this is a great place to learn. It's a pretty simple rig. It's a big rig, but it's it's pretty simple. Um, and a lot of my job was to make sure everybody knew what they were doing and learn properly. And uh, the people that did know what they were doing to teach everybody, you know. And uh, we had some issues with, uh, you know, people trying to get things down. Like we had a night um, and we lost our steering. It was pretty intense. Uh, the crew hadn't struck sail yet and anything less than no wind. It was 12.30 at night, pretty sure around when it happened, so it was dark, it was a really dark night. Um, we were in seven to 10 foot seas, and uh, we were taking the beam, so the boat was rocking side to side like this, and we had to strike sail, and I mean, we had to strike it now. There was no, no time for you know, trying to figure things out. So it was getting everybody where they needed to be on the halyards to drop this sail safely, quickly and um, that point was really what showed how much everybody had come together and learned. Um, the sails came down, it was a little rough but it happened and it was that moment where I realized wow everybody's finally, you know, everyone's got it. Everything really clicked in that moment. So it's a good feeling for that to happen, to see you work so hard and uh, for that. And you know you're also, part of my job is to any personal difficulties, they come to me with them, and I have to remedy that situation. So, you know, we had a few things with that, people not you know, getting along or not liking the way other people were doing things, but you don't have to like each other, but you got to get along, yeah. and that was a, a big, big issue on this trip. You know, you're at sea so long with each other 24-7, yeah. so you have to. <laughs> How long have you been sailing? Um, just going on three years now. Really? Yeah. Holy cannoli, Pat, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's I pretty crazy. got on boats and I haven't stopped since I started. You're just eating it up, huh? Yeah, I oh, yeah. Want to learn everything you can and yeah. soaking it all up. Yeah, I love it. He so, actually did a bunch of the tattoos on me. He was a tattoo artist before. Yeah. So. Really? A tattoo artist and funeral director. <laughs> and funeral director? Yeah. Are you kidding me? No. <laughs> yeah, I'm interested. I don't even that. know what to say at this point. <laughs> I really I just don't even know what to say. Yeah. Well... So tell me, so tell me, what are some of your favorite ports that you've been so far? Norfolk, Virginia was absolutely amazing. Uh, For what reasons? They, uh, they, they gave is it the women or what? What is, what is it about? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, they, they gave us the dock space, which was phenomenal. Um, the hotel there, I think, it was the Renaissance. They, uh, they gave us use of their pool, their hot tub, their showers for nothing. Their internet. I mean. Local captains showed up to check out the boat to offer us anything that we needed and help. 
um, we got invited, the captain and I got invited out on a, on a trip on one of their local tall ships um, to like a captain's dinner and rub elbows and meet a lot of people there and it's the same thing, everybody was just so happy to see us, to see a tall ship there um, for what we did, uh, it was just the reception was amazing and uh, Greenport was also the same way. I mean, Greenport, Connecticut is it? Long Island. Long Greenport, Island, Long Island, yeah. okay. Um, yeah, 60 to 100 people a day coming to the boat, giving them tours. People, every local business there wants us there, you know, offering their services. Um, just, it's been phenomenal since we got back. You know. Can you see yourself doing anything else, or is this going to be it for you? Do oh, no, I, I definitely see a, a lot more in my future doing this with relief work. Um, you know, all the things that are going on right now, like the oil spills, there's other places that need relief, you know, other than Haiti. There's places that have needed help for forever and, you know, just gone, swept under the rug. Um, so there's a lot. And again, so you were instrumental in putting that trip together for the relief. You well, myself and, and uh, Jared, you know, yeah. together. There's yeah. a lot of work. Yep. A lot, a lot of work. Um, I remain through most of that, you know, in the background doing all the maintenance and <laughs> that sort of thing, getting it. Jared was on the phones 24-7, so it was a, you know, combined effort to make it happen. All right, great. Anything else you want to add before we end? Uh, it's just nice to have actually done something, really done something um, to help people, not just <laughs> saying it. Um, <laughs> Not just filling out, you know, uh, signing a petition or dialing star 10 on your cell phone to donate money. You know, we actually physically handed things to the people that needed it. Yeah. And literally saw firsthand um, what it's like for the people that this stuff is going to on a daily basis. And seeing the horror of it um, really, really changes you and really makes it, uh, makes it worth it. Not that it wasn't worth it anyways, but to really see it, TV and the photographs, honestly, no matter how powerful some of that stuff is, does it no justice. Yeah. Um, when I stepped off the boat and walked around in Port-au-Prince and uh, saw what's going on there, it changed uh, the way I see a lot of things. So. All right, man. Well, thanks so much. Absolutely.